Welcome back to DBL. 40 years ago, a young woman was just starting her radio career when the unimaginable happened. She was abducted and murdered. Finally, a crack in the case, thanks to a stranger and a beer mug. We have an update in DBL's True Crime Chronicles. Helene Prasinski was a 21-year-old college student from Massachusetts. The aspiring journalist moved to Denver for an internship at KHOW Radio. Although I had only worked with her a very short time, I was convinced right away that she was very bright and had a great sense of humor. It was January 16th, 1980. Helene was just two weeks on the job when she went missing. It's believed that Ms. Pusinski got off her bus after work here Wednesday night. She was abducted sometime after that. The next day? Ms. Pusinski's body was found early Thursday. She'd been sexually assaulted and stabbed. Her co-worker, Bob Scott, would be the one to help identify her body. This was the toughest assignment I ever had. As a reporter, I'd seen a lot of people did, but this was a friend of mine. Police launched a full investigation in search of the killer. We make as many contacts as we can immediately after a thing like this in an effort to try to, to talk with people when their memories are still in focus and that they can remember substantial information. Investigators collected DNA at the scene, but it wasn't enough. A year later, the case went cold. And then, nearly 40 years later... Here we are today, where we have an individual who is in custody. James Curtis Clanton. Investigators had his DNA for years, but there was never a match in the FBI's database. The breakthrough came from genetic genealogy. Once we started working the genealogy, got coming down his family tree, it appeared that his mother was a dead end, but she wasn't. They found a woman in Georgia who took a genealogy test last summer. Parts of her DNA matched the killers. I did not know him. I was a small link in them narrowing it down is, I, I, I don't even know, um, it's surreal. Thanks to Jesse's DNA, investigators were able to make more connections and track down Clanton in Florida. They took his beer mug at a local bar and tested his DNA. It was a match from the crime scene nearly 40 years ago. Clanton was extradited back to Colorado. How then do you plead to murder in the first degree after deliberation? Guilty. Clanton puts up no fight. It's very unusual to hear that kind of uh, remorse and gratitude for the opportunities that he knew he didn't deserve, but that he got. Most of Pruszynski's relatives have since passed, except for her sister, who can finally find closure 40 years later. Earlier, Al Lindsay and I spoke with a reporter who's been following the case. Let's take a look. We're joined by investigative reporter Kevin Vaughn from Nine News in Denver. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. There's been a huge break in the case. James uh, Clanton pled guilty, right? But did he ever say why he went after Helene? Ever. He has not said that yet. He's scheduled for sentencing April 10th, and that's the time when he will have a chance to make a statement in court. Whether he'll talk about why he did this, I guess, is another question. Do you think he will, knowing this case? Well, he did two things that are unusual. He immediately waived extradition after he was arrested right. in Florida, and they brought him right back here, and then he pleaded guilty to first-degree murder, did not put the family, the Pruszynski family, through the, the pain of a trial and that sort of thing. So, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm, uh, I have to ask you this, Kevin. This, this took place in the 1980s. Uh, the law was different then. Does that mean that we might see him get released early or did, like how does this affect his sentence? Yeah, so the 1980 first degree murder law in Colorado, he will be eligible for parole after 20 years. Wow. Um, that doesn't mean he'll be paroled. He'd still have to go to the parole board and have it approved. But um, he's in his early 60s, so he's going to serve at least into his 80s. Um, and you know, it's hard to predict what a parole board might do 20 years down the down the road. But he will be eligible for parole. Unlike today, somebody convicted of first-degree murder today is 
gets life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now there are reports that James could possibly be linked to other cases in Colorado back in the 90s. Have police followed up on that lead? That is being investigated. Um, one of the issues is that the statute of limitations on sexual assault is um, much short, is, is short, it's just a few years, unlike murder, which there is no statute of limitations. So they are looking at some older unsolved sexual assaults to see if there are links. To date, they have not made any of those. Wow. That's always why I've pushed for longer statute of limitations for sexual assault victims. Some of them can't come forward, Sam. Some don't remember or things like this happen. Right. Kevin, thank you so much for being here. To, uh, to read more on this case, please visit 9news.com. You can also learn more in a new podcast episode out now. Just search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. Kevin, thanks again. We'll be right back. Thanks, Kevin.